It's Redstone Project Week, so welcome back to Boundless. Hey everyone, hope you're having a fantastic day. In the near future, I have a ton of cool nether projects planned, but I don't know about you guys, I don't really trust myself to work in the nether without constant fire resistance, cause, you know, there's lava literally everywhere. So that brings me to today's project. We're going to be working on a automatic potion brewer, and before we get to building the project, I had to figure out, of course, where to put it. So at first I was planning on putting it in the castle, but unfortunately the shape of it just barely won't fit, so we had to find somewhere else. A lot of our projects have been above ground in some really cool looking buildings, so I decided to start a new section of our base, except this time underground. I picked a pretty nice area located pretty close to the harbor and just close enough to the creeper farm that it'll actually be able to run while we're building. As always, the first step is to clear out an area. To fit all of the redstone and give us a little bit of extra space to do all the building, I cleared out a 18 by 9 by 8 area. But if you're following along at home, the redstone part will only take up a 15 by 5 by 5 block area. The redstone design is largely based on Mumbo's Potion Brewer. He did a pretty in-depth build video, so as always, I'll leave that link in the description. Time to get building. I put all of the redstone stuff we'll need in this shulker, so if you're building along at home, feel free to take a screenshot so you know exactly what materials you'll need. Then of course, on top of that, you can use whatever blocks for the facade and wiring. One note is that this farm actually works for Java versions 1.12 and newer, along with the matching bedrock versions. But in versions below 1.13, you'll actually need to switch out two of these chests with trap chests. Of course, if you're playing on a more recent version, then don't worry about it. The first thing we'll do is build the interface which you'll use to select which potions to brew. During the redstone build, I'll use stone bricks for most of the redstone and some of the facade, but we'll go back and make it look a little bit nicer later. However, for the levers and buttons, I'll use smooth stone just to keep things separate. So we'll start with two blocks for the gunpowder, redstone, and glowstone levers, and then seven blocks for the different potion ingredients. You can actually extend this section for as many ingredients as you want, but I figured seven would probably just be good enough. Then I built some pillars and a bit of a facade to uh, hide some of the redstone that will be connecting up to the smooth stone blocks. On the right side we'll put the two levers down and then on the ingredient section we'll place some wooden buttons. It's important that they're wooden buttons since they have a shorter redstone pulse. Then we'll extend the left section by 3 blocks before placing our chest for the potion output. Since chests can't open if there's a block above them, I just put a slab there, but you can leave it open or even use an upside down stair if you really want. On top of that section, we'll place some redstone lamps that will indicate if we have the ingredients needed to make a potion. So on the side above the chest, we'll place 3 redstone lamps and then another 7 just above where we put the buttons and last two on top above the levers. And the last one I forgot will actually go on the bottom. Behind the chest, we'll place a hopper facing into the chest with a brewing stand on top. Leaving the block above the chest as a slab lets us see and interact with the brewing stand just to kind of make sure everything's working. Then we'll place two hoppers going into the brewing stand from the top, and then a line of hoppers that goes all the way to the last redstone lamp. Then we'll add some droppers for all the ingredients that we'll uh, kind of put in this middle section.
and then underneath those blocks we'll place a line of redstone. On top of the two lever blocks we'll add some redstone torches with blocks above them and then place two sticky pistons facing away from the redstone torches with blocks on both of them. Then we'll add three more droppers facing up in a small L shape, which will just connect to the rest of the hoppers with a small hopper chain. It's important that all of these blocks are placed exactly how I place them since a lot of the redstone is super compact and the blocks all kind of just have their purpose for being where they are. Next we'll add some blocks next to the chain of ingredient buttons with some comparators. Nope, not repeaters, comparators. Facing out of each of the droppers. Then at the end of each of the comparators we'll add another row of blocks. The dropper closest to the piston will have to be done a little bit differently, but for the rest we'll put a redstone torch on top of the block with another row of blocks on top of the torch. And then we'll put even more redstone torches on the side of each block facing the front of the build. Then to power the redstone lamps, we'll put repeaters on top of each of the hoppers facing into the block above the lamp. On the far left side, we'll place three repeaters and put a block below with a redstone torch on the side, leading into a block on top with another redstone torch on top of that. Next up we'll work on the nether warp storage. So three blocks into that redstone line will have a redstone facing into a block with a redstone torch on the side. Then we'll place a redstone repeater from the torch into another block with a piece of redstone on the other side and another block with a redstone torch on the side with yet another block on top which should lead right back into that dropper that we placed earlier. Then for the redstone lamp we'll do something kind of similar to the ingredients with another comparator pulling out of the dropper, facing into a block with a redstone torch on top, a block with another redstone torch, and a repeater facing the lamp. Now all the main storage indicators should be hooked up so let's work on the blaze powder. We'll add another hopper line that faces into the side of the brewing stand and back up to the same level as the other lines. And then we'll place a double chest on top of that hopper. This is where you would use trap chests if you're in a lower version of the game, but otherwise you can just use regular chests. Then we can just put a comparator facing out from the chest into that block for the redstone lamp. We'll place another line of hoppers on the other side of the brewing stand for water bottles, going up to the same level and out one which now we're out of hoppers, so I guess we know that we did it right. Then we'll just add one more double chest with a comparator facing in the same direction. We're getting pretty close here. So just next to the redstone dust, we'll place another block with a redstone torch on the side and place another block on top of the torch with another torch on the side of that block. Then we'll place some blocks next to this hopper on the side of the brewing stand with a piece of redstone that the torch is going into a repeater that powers the block. However, this is important. Make sure that this repeater has four ticks of delay or basically full delay. Then we'll place a block behind the brewing stand with a repeater facing out from the hopper which goes into a three block line. On top of those blocks, we'll place a piece of redstone, um, then a repeater set to another four ticks of delay, going into a block, not a piece of redstone. And then out of the block, we'll put another four tick repeater, going into another block with a piece of redstone on top. And then this part is a little bit tricky. Next to that redstone, we'll need to place a sticky piston facing downwards with a block of redstone attached to it. 
I also just realized this repeater down here needs to be at 4 ticks of delay as well, so all in total that should be 4 repeaters at 4 ticks of delay. To lock this bottom hopper and stop the potions from being taken out too early, we'll add a line of blocks out from the bottom hopper with the repeater facing into the hopper, a block being powered by another repeater, a block, and then around the corner another two repeaters with another block. Then we'll build a small platform that is too wide that goes all the way to the edge of the pistons. Place two redstone dust with a torch at the end, and then fill in comparators all the way to the corner, where you'll leave a block and a redstone dust on the other corner, and then comparators that just go all the way back. This section adds just enough delay time that the potion can be completely brewed with all the ingredients before taken out. Alright, last step. Two blocks from the other end of the first redstone dust line place a little bit of redstone dust going into a repeater which faces into a block, with a redstone torch on the side and a block on top with another redstone torch. And then put another redstone torch on the other face that we did earlier, leading into some redstone dust with two repeaters facing two more blocks and then put two redstone torches on top of both. And those should just be under the uh, blocks attached to the pistons. That's it for the redstone. I know that was a lot of building, and this is kind of my first time doing an actual build tutorial type video, so if it was a little hard to follow, I apologize. But if you guys um, would like more tutorials, let me know, and maybe I'll slow it down a little bit and try to make some more polished videos. After doing some double checking to make sure all of the redstone worked, I decided to make the front of it just look a little bit nicer. So of course you can detail the front of this however you want, but first I decided to fill in the floor with some spruce planks, and then added some pillars in between each of the redstone lamp sections. I put some bricks in the background, and then put some spruce pillars in front just to add a little bit more depth. Then along the top layer I added a bunch of dark oak planks. It's important to note that the top layer above the redstone lamps have to be a solid block since some of our redstone depends on that. Then I tried switching our block palette up just a little bit and actually used some crimson wood for the detailed trim at the top. And then I just added a line of sp stripped spruce underneath the lamps which will put some item frames on to keep things straight. The last step was adding some dark oak stairs on the bottom layer and that's it much better looking than some solid stone brick. So here's the final product. I think it turned out pretty nice, and I actually tried to do a couple designs kind of just to make the room look a little bit nicer, but I think I might actually kind of switch the style up in this underground section um, away from kind of a lot of the stuff that we've been doing for the rest of our base, but we'll see. That's something I'll probably do for the, uh, the start of the next episode. But I went ahead and filled in all the item frames with all of the different items that we'll need. So as you can see on this right section, this is where you'll have the gunpowder at the very end if you want to make it throwable. And then on this section you can choose between redstone or glowstone if you want to make the potion stronger or longer depending on which one. Um, so those are just for switching the potions and changing that. And then the rest of these lights are if you have the rest of the stuff in stock. So right now I haven't filled anything in and you can see that all the lamps are off, but I figured it'd be a good idea for me to show you guys how to actually fill up the machine too, in case you didn't know how that worked. But what you'll do is you'll just go back here and um, in each of the droppers you'll fill up the ingredients. So we'll do that first and I actually have to check which order I did. Um, so as you fill in each of the droppers, so we'll put some golden carrots there, you'll see that if I can get out of my redstone. Uh oh. Now that we added that golden carrot into the dropper, you can see that the redstone lamp actually turns on, meaning that we can make a potion there. And then for the water bottles, we have those uh, double chests that we placed earlier. On the right side of this chest, you'll actually fill this with some of the blaze powder that you'll use. And unfortunately, I don't have enough blaze powder to actually fill the chest to keep the, uh, the light on, but you can see it turns on um, and then once it fills up it, it turns off and then in this section you'll put all of the water bottles that you'll need and lastly you'll put all of the nether wart you need into this dropper down here 
And then that should be it. It should all work now. And you can see that some of the lights have turned on with uh, what we filled in. And then of course I have all the other materials that we'll be able to put in the rest of the hoppers as well. But what you should be able to see, if I add some redstone over here, this is where you add the gunpowder, the redstone, and the glowstone as well. And I think, let's see which one. So redstone is when it's powered, so that's the back one. And then the glowstone goes there. And then we can actually, oh, I'm stuck again. And then once we do that, we should be able to check if our system works. So we have it switched to redstone. And then we'll just click this lever here and then it should fill up the water bottle. It does the nether wart first using the blaze powder that we put in there earlier. And then once that finishes, it drops in the golden carrot from when we pressed that earlier. And then last step, it checks our modifier, which is the redstone that we put in. And just like that, it finishes the potions. And then once it finishes brewing the potion with all the modifiers, it outputs all the potions down to this chest here. So there you go, a fully automatic potion brewing system. We still left some space for a last potion that we may end up needing, but um, overall I think it works really great and it's gonna really help us in some of our future projects. As always, I really hope you guys enjoyed watching the building process today. And um, I know today's build was a little bit more technical and we didn't do as much building, but don't worry, next week we'll have a lot of cool projects getting ready to go. So I hope you guys enjoyed watching. As always, if you enjoyed the content, make sure to hit the sub button, hit the like button, and I'll see you guys next time for our next video. Thanks for watching.